Good morning, everyone. My name is Brandy Lee, and I am an Associate Director in the Office of Student Financial Assistance. Thank you for letting us share important information today about understanding and finalizing your son or daughter's financial aid. As we begin to welcome students to campus, now is a great time for families to finalize financial aid requirements so that everything is in place prior to your student arriving on campus for the start of the school year in August. During the webinar, you may type in any questions that you might have into the chat box. Um, I will be sure to answer all of your questions before the webinar is over. Um, if there are any pressing questions that um, need to be answered um, as it relates to a specific slide or something that I'm going over, then we'll squeeze those in um, as we go along. But other than that, let's just go ahead and jump right into the presentation. The first thing I'd like to point out is that it's not too late to complete the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. It's the beginning point of the aid application process for grants and loans. If you have not already, please complete the application at FAFSA.gov using Miami school code of 003077 to still be considered for federal aid for the upcoming school year. For continuing students, we recommend that the FAFSA is completed by February 1st of each year. The FAFSA takes financial information supplied by the family and uses it to determine your family's expected family contribution or EFC. And that EFC is used to help determine what a student's level of financial need will be each year. The EFC is an estimate of what your family can pay for one year of college. Once Miami receives a FAFSA, the first thing we do is construct a cost of attendance or COA. The COA or cost of attendance is comprised of two numbers, direct charges, charges for which the student will be billed like tuition, fees, room and board, and also indirect charges, charges for which the student is not billed but will still need a budget for, such as books and supplies and transportation. We take the cost of attendance and subtract from it the expected family contribution and the resulting difference is the student's financial need. We use financial need to determine need-based financial aid eligibility. By completing the FAFSA, students can be considered for one of several grants. Grants are free money and are not repaid. One of those grants is the Pell Grant a federal high-need-based grant with a maximum award of $6,195 for the 2019-20 school year. There is also the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, or SEOG, which is another federal high-need-based grant with a maximum award of $1,000 at Miami. And finally, the Ohio College Opportunity Grant, or OCOG, which is a state High need based grant, which has which had a maximum award of fifteen hundred dollars for this past school year. Students must be Ohio residents to qualify for this grant. Also, by completing the FAFSA, students will be offered one or a combination of the Federal Direct Stafford subsidized, which is a need based loan, and or unsubsidized loan. While loans are under heavy scrutiny right now, especially in the media, we believe student loans are a solid investment in a student's education, provided the students borrow smartly when considering their expected professional outcome. When students enroll, we have tools and counseling available to help ensure they are not overborrowing. These federal student loans are made in the student's name. They don't require a credit check or cosigner and students can borrow up to $5,500 for the first year, for their first year. And that amount increases to $6,500 in their sophomore year and $7,500 in their junior and senior years. The $5,500 is divided between fall and spring semester. 
Repayment on the loans begins six months after graduation and can be deferred if your student plans to um, go on to graduate school. The interest rate is fixed and for the upcoming school year will be 4.53%. In addition to federal student loans, federal parent bus loans can be borrowed by the parent earmarked for dependent students' educational costs and require a light credit history review. There is no maximum amount that you can borrow except the cost to attend minus any aid the student has already received. The interest rate is fixed and for the upcoming school year will be 7.08%. Another loan option would be private educational loans, which are typically borrowed in the student's name and require a cosigner. Interest rate is determined by the overall credit score of the applicant and cosigner. Families with excellent credit history might very well obtain a lower interest rate than the 7.08% of the PLUS loan. At Miami, we know that about 65% of our families obtain a better interest rate with a private educational loan than that of the Parent PLUS loan. If you want to get more information on loans, you can visit our loans page at miamioh.edu slash loans. Another way that students can help finance their education is through on-campus employment. On-campus employment is an excellent way to help with indirect or out-of-pocket expenses. About 5,500 students work on campus in a wide variety of jobs, with some of the more popular work locations being our libraries or recreational sports center. Students who obtain a job are paid bi-weekly, with our pay range going from minimum wage of $8.55 up to $12.10 per hour. Pay rates do vary based on the type of duties to be performed. To find a job, students should visit our student employment page at miamioh.edu slash student employment. And just a note here about student employment, if your student uh, does obtain a job on campus, um, th that those payments are not applied to their bill. It is money that they get a paycheck for biweekly. Finally, we have two interest-free payment plans available. Our payment plans will be finalized soon and students will receive a communication from us about those plans. We have a four-pay payment plan uh, with no interest, but there is a $40 enrollment fee. And the first payment for fall semester would be due in July, with the last one being due in October. And there's also a three-pay payment plan, also no interest, with a $45 enrollment fee, with the first payment for fall semester being due in August and the last payment being due in October. For more information, you can go to our website at miamioh.edu slash payment plan. If your student completed the FAFSA or received a scholarship, they would have received a financial aid packet in the mail. The packet contains the award notice, which you see here. There are four sections to our award notice. The cost of attendance, which is an estimate of our cost for the year. Scholarships and grants or gift aid section, where we list the free money available, if any, along with a calculation that shows how much is left to pay after the application of scholarships and grants. Self-help aid, which shows aid like loans, work study, and payment plans. And then finally, a cost breakdown, where we do the math and show what is left after the application of all aid. In terms of extenuating or special circumstances, Miami does have an appeal process for recalculating a student's eligibility for federal need-based aid. We know that the FAFSA is based on income that is now two years old. And so that data on the FAFSA may no longer reflect your family's current financial situation. So if you have any circumstances like those listed on this slide, we may be able to recalculate your student's eligibility for federal need-based aid. If you see anything on this slide that might apply to your family situation, please make it a point to contact us. 
Now that we reviewed the FAFSA and the different types of aid available for families to cover education expenses, we'll turn our attention to what students must do to finalize their aid and complete outstanding financial aid requirements. These instructions, I'm going to point out that these instructions um, are based on what the steps that the student will need to take. First, the student will need to authenticate into the My One Stop login by clicking on either, either login link. So the one in the top right-hand corner or the one in the bottom left-hand corner. The link will prompt the student to enter their MUNET unique ID and MUNET password combination and two-factor authentication. Due to the Family Rights and Education Privacy Act, known as FERPA, students who want to share financial information with parents or guardians must provide access. You can visit miamioh.edu slash share dash access to learn more. I'm going to repeat that, miamioh.edu slash share dash access. By sharing access, parents or other individuals will have the ability to log in to My One Stop to view the student's financial aid and outstanding requirements, but you will not be able to complete actions such as accepting or declining aid. Also, one tip for parents or other individuals that are granted access is to use an incognito window or a different browser upon logging in if you share a computer with the student. This is to prevent the need to use the two-factor authentication that students are required to complete. Once logged in, under My One Stop on the right corner, students can select from the drop-down menu to view financial aid. The financial aid drop-down box should default to fall semester 2019-20. When financial aid is selected from the menu, there will be several options the student can choose to expand to view additional information. To view the financial aid from the financial aid award notice, expand the My Financial Aid option. The financial aid will appear under Aid Awards. Gift aid, like scholarships and grants, are automatically accepted and don't need to be accepted by the student. The status should already show as accepted. Self-help aid, such as federal student loans and the TEACH grant, do need to be accepted by the student and the status will remain as offered until the student accepts the loan. To accept the aid, click on the red Accept or Decline Offer icon. Students may input the amount they'd like to accept or accept the full amount. Any aid that is in an accepted status, with the exception of federal work study, will be applied directly to the student's bill as long as all other outstanding financial aid requirements have been completed. Again, only students are able to accept or decline aid. They must be logged into My One Stop with their unique ID and password. Parents do not have this ability when logging in with their credentials. Students also have the ability to print their financial aid awards by clicking on the Display Aid by Term and Print Your Awards link. In some instances, organizations or institutions may ask the student for this information when applying for scholarships or for sibling tuition discounts, et cetera. While you're still logged into My One Stop, you can select from the drop-down menu to view financial aid information. Select the financial aid period, which should be fall semester 2019-20. Then under outstanding requirements, the student can view outstanding requirements that need to be completed to finalize their aid. If a message appears such as this yellow box, but it's red, that indicates the student has outstanding requirements that will prevent aid from being applied to their bill. Clicking on the link for the outstanding requirement will redirect you to the page to either download the documents necessary to, to fulfill the outstanding requirement, or it'll take you to an information page about the requirement, or in the case of federal student loans, it'll take you to the site to complete the requirement. So with federal student loans, um, you do have to, students do have to additionally, in, in addition to accepting them, they also have to complete 
what's called the entrance uh, counseling requirement as well as the master promissory note and those are actually on a different site than my one stop those are on studentloans.gov but that link will take you directly to that site um, additionally if a student is offered a teach grant um, that does need to um, the requirements that need to be completed are um, an agreement to serve as well as an entrance counseling and that will uh, that link will also take you directly to studentloans.gov to complete those requirements. Any requirements that have already been completed will fall under the completed requirements section if you expand that. So if your students already, if you want to get an idea of what has already been completed, you can just expand that option and it will show any completed requirements. In addition to accepting or declining financial aid and completing outstanding financial aid requirements, I'd like to spend some time reviewing some additional information related to students' financial aid that you might find very useful. The first of those is the verification review process. Verification is the process that colleges and universities use to confirm the data reported on the FAFSA that it's accurate. It's not an audit by the IRS, and in many cases, um, students are randomly selected for a verification review by the central processing system, which is the Department of Education system that processes the FAFSA application. Students and parents may be asked to submit additional documentation or forms that support the income information that was reported on the FAFSA as part of the verification review process. So it's really important that those uh, additional documentation or forms are submitted as quickly as possible. Any outstanding requirements needed to fulfill verification um, are going to be found on my one stop when the student logs in. And it is a good idea to try to, 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 try to complete those by yesterday. Um, but if you haven't already, there is still time. For more information on the verification process and to view verification requirements, please visit miamioh.edu slash verification. Students receiving outside scholarships or institutional waivers, such as scholarships from other institutions or organizations other than Miami, those should be reported to our office through my one stop as well. By clicking on the Report Your Outside Scholarships or Fee Waivers option under Self-Reported Information on My One Stop, students can indicate who they are receiving this source, this source of aid from and the amount. It is important to report this information so that it can be factored into the student's total financial aid package as the total amount of aid the student is receiving, whether it's from Miami or from outside sources, cannot exceed that total cost of attendance um, that we talked about earlier that we estimate for the student. Most scholarship, most outside scholarships are going to be sent directly to Miami and applied directly to the student's bill, but if an outside scholarship is made out to the student and Miami University, the student should first endorse the check and then send it to Miami or drop it off at the one-stop location. Any of the one-stop locations, uh, it's fine for them to drop that off, and we do have that contact information listed at the end of the webinar. Um, if the student is sending in a check, it's important that they be sure to include their banner ID or their unique ID on the check. Additionally, Miami assumes that all students will be enrolled full-time. Um, for students that are recipients of Miami scholarships, it's important to understand that those scholarships will not be applied to their bill and, until they are full-time. Um, if, the, if the scholarship um, requires a specific GPA to be renewed, um, that information would have been listed on their scholarship award notice. Um, but these are just some of the scholarship policies that um, apply to students receiving scholarships. 
Um, students can only use their scholarships during the fall and the spring semesters, and they can um, receive those scholarships for a maximum of eight semesters. And cumulative GPA or grade point averages are reviewed at the end of each year, at the end of spring semester, for students receiving scholarships. So if there is a GPA requirement um, that they must meet, we would check that at the end of spring semester to make sure that they are still meeting that. To see a complete listing of scholarship policies, please visit miamioh.edu slash scholarships. Financial aid award notices are based on full-time enrollment for fall and spring. If a student drops a course uh, during the semester um, or they decide to withdraw from school before the semester is over, um, it is really important that they contact the One Stop to determine what the financial impacts might be uh, to their financial aid. Um, the contact information for the One Stop, again, is going to be listed at the end of the webinar. Colleges and universities are required to monitor a student's academic progress to ensure that they complete their degree within a specified time frame when they are receiving federal student aid. To ensure this, Miami students receiving federal aid must pass at least 67% of the classes they attempt and must achieve a 2.0 cumulative grade point average after attending Miami for four semesters. When students drop or fail classes or withdraw from school during the semester, these actions could all have a negative impact on their eligibility for federal student aid for subsequent semesters. If your student is having academic difficulty in their classes, it's important that they contact their academic advisor or student success center. Additionally, if they're considering dropping a class or withdrawing from the university, again, they should contact the One Stop to determine what impact that might have on their aid. For more information on our satisfactory academic progress standards, please visit miamioh.edu slash SAP. Finally, I'd like to highlight contact information for the One Stop and the Student Success Center and just explain briefly what each office does, as I've mentioned both within the presentation. The One Stop provides essential information, answers questions, counsels, and provides problem resolution for current and former students, parents, families, alumni, faculty, staff, various departments, and the broader university community in the areas of registration, enrollment, financial aid, student records, billing, and payment. The Student Success Center focuses on advocacy, problem solving, and retention. With the goal of increasing student persistence to graduation, the staff helps students untangle and resolve complex problems and provides assistance with navigating university policies and procedures. This concludes the Understanding Your Financial Aid presentation. Right now, I'd like to move forward with answering some of the questions we've received throughout the presentation. So the first question um, that we have is, can international students file the FAFSA? Um, in many cases, no. Um, there are um, certain eligibility requirements that you would need to meet in terms of um, your uh, visa status. Um, and those can be found if you go onto the FAFSA.gov site, um, what those requirements are. But typically, the answer is no. They, um, international students would not be eligible to receive federal aid by completing the FAFSA. The second question is, if I did not receive or see the award notice, how do I get a breakdown of the cost of attendance for the academic year? Um, if we 
did not um, send you an award notice, you should have received a cost of attendance letter, uh, which basically um, breaks down what the costs are um, and just encourages students to still complete the FAFSA. Um, the student could have it, so if you are the parent and you're asking, it might be a good idea to check with the student. But if you don't have it, you can always call the One Stop, um, and we can give you that breakdown, or either we can reprint the, the letter that we initially sent. Additionally, when students log into My One Stop, they can get that cost of attendance breakdown on there as well. So it will show them what the cost will be uh, or their cost of attendance will be for the upcoming year. So several ways that you can still get that information. Um, it's also listed on our website on uh, miamioh.edu slash one stop. Um, you can find tuition and fee, well, it will be posted there soon, tuition and fees for the upcoming year as well as um, estimates that we provide for things that they're not billed for, such as transportation and um, miscellaneous living expenses and things like that. When should the student accept aid so the bill is accurate? So that's another question that we have. Um, so students should be doing that now because the bill will be generated uh, soon, uh, within the next couple of weeks or so. Um, so student, if they have not already, uh, students should be logging into My One Stop to go over uh, their financial aid um, and accept uh, any any aid or decline any aid uh, that they want to accept or decline, and finally to complete their outstanding requirements. Otherwise, if they wait until after the bill is generated, they're not going to see that aid reflected in there. So your bill is, is going to look higher than it probably would have if they had completed those requirements. The bill, um, the electronic bill itself won't update. So that's just a, um, the bill itself is not a, a paper bill, so we don't send you anything. That's just important to note as well. We don't send anything. Um, students get um, an email that the bill is available for them to view. And then parents, if you are, uh, if your student is granted you access, then you'll also get that notification. But um, once they view the bill, um, it will reflect whatever financial aid they have accepted and finalized. Um, once once that initial bill comes out, they would just have to view their student account to see what aid has since been accepted or authorized and then applied to their to their bill. Um, so the initial bill itself won't update. They would just need to view their student account to see any aid that's going to be applied to their to their charges. Um, Another question is how long does it take for the entrance counseling or MPN to show us satisfied on the Miami system? So um, some people started completing these requirements some time ago, um, and we only recently started uh, uploading that information electronically to show the requirement as fulfilled. If your student has already completed that, you should be you should see it as completed on my one stop for them if they've already done it. Um, if they if you don't see it, um, that might mean that they haven't completed it. You can log into studentloans.gov um, to double check that it is completed. It will show a record of the entrance counseling if that's completed or the master promissory note if that's completed. If you see that it is completed, but it's still not showing up on my one stop, um, just give us a call or an email to the one stop and we can look into that further for you. Okay, someone is requesting that I repeat the website for students to share access. Um, that is Miami oh.edu backslash share dash 
access. All right, um, let's see. Can international students work on campus and how many hours? International students can work on campus depending on the type of visa uh, that they are approved for. Um, and if they are approved to work, um, then they can work no more than 20 hours. Um, but it's important that um, students work directly with student employment to determine their eligibility to work on campus um, and also submit the appropriate documentation to be able to work. Okay, one question, I think this might be the last one, is how does the tuition promise factor in financial aid? What if our FAFSA changes? Does that change our promise? So the answer to that is the tuition promise is only a guarantee that tuition and fees will not change for the four years or eight semesters that the student is here. Um, it doesn't have any bearing on the financial aid at all. Um, only the tuition and fees and room and board, I should say that, are, are set or promised for the four years. So if you complete a FAFSA this year um, and, for example, your student is grant eligible and then for, the, for a subsequent year you submit a FAFSA and your student is no longer grant eligible, then um, your, you know, what, what you'll owe to the university will increase. Um, because you're losing um, some of that grant eligibility. Um, so at that point, you'd have to look at some of the self-help options that I mentioned during the webinar. Um, but the tuition and tuition and fees and room and board are the only things that are guaranteed to not increase as part of the tuition promise. And hopefully I gave uh, enough explanation with that. Um, let's see. I just want to remind everyone that this webinar is being recorded um, and it will be available for replay online. Uh, the slides will be sent out to um, registrants um, that registered for the webinar today. Um, there will be a link to the presentation on the Parent and Family Programs page of Miami's site. So if you encounter any questions or concerns as you work through final, finalizing your student's aid, please be sure to contact the One Stop for additional information. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we do have another question. Where can we find more information about private loans? So on the miamioh.edu slash loans page, there is additional information about private loans as well. In addition to that, we have a tool called Fast Choice that you can utilize to compare lenders that students who students and parents who have borrowed private loans um, and attended Miami in the past have used. So that is another uh, great tool to utilize if you are considering uh, a private loan um, for yourself or either if the student is considering a private loan. But that tool is called Fast Choice. And if you just search for Fast Choice, it'll, that'll come right up. Um, but miamioh.edu slash loans is where you can find uh, more information about private loans. There are some private loans available for international students as well. Um, you can also find that information in the Fast Choice tool um, when, you, when you use that to compare lenders. So um, I think 